So, if you've been following the rise of Linux gaming in recent years, you know it is mostly possible thanks to Proton, a translation layer that turns Windows instructions into things Linux can understand. At the core of Proton is Wine, the translation layer for the Windows executable programs, and while it works pretty well to make most games run, unless they use some kind of atrocious kernel-level anti-cheat, that is, Wine also is supposed to work for running regular Windows programs. And it's been a long while since I tried to do that, so I thought I would take a look at a few very popular Windows apps and see if I can get them to run on Linux, and if so, how well they run. So, currently, is Wine just for video games, or could it work for Photoshop, Microsoft Office, AutoCAD, Affinity Designer, and other things? Well, we're gonna see that in this video, after I tell you everything about our sponsor, of course. This video is sponsored by Squarespace, your all-in-one platform to create, publish, and manage your own website. Squarespace has really easy tools to make sure anyone can end up with a nice-looking, well-optimized website, no matter if you know how to code or not. Squarespace has what they call their Blueprint system, which lets you pick from a variety of templates that are pre-built and will suit any type of website. And they even have the SEO tools you need to make sure your website doesn't end up in the last page of Google's search results. To go further, Squarespace has their own design engine to create your own pages. You can just drag and drop elements where you want them, and you can change the colors, the fonts, and just tweak the template however you want. And then you can add some extra features like creating your own online shop with a complete payment system. You can design your own logo from Squarespace, book your own domain name. So click the link in the description below to give Squarespace a shot, and you'll even get 10% off your first domain or website purchase. So let's start with the big daddy of Windows programs, Microsoft Office 365. I tried a few methods here. First, I went with Bottles. It is a nice graphical application that lets you create bottles, which are wine prefixes, separate wine environments for each application or game you want to install, meaning you can tailor every wine setting, every DLL override, and everything else to this specific application. The issue here is that Bottles is a Flatpak app, and as such, it is sandboxed, and so doesn't have access to some system libraries, including WinBind, which is needed for Office to install properly. So I decided to drop it after it failed to install a few times. I then moved on to the latest stable version of Wine, version 9.0, installed as a system package. I followed a nice tutorial that felt like it could get Office 365 to work. I left a link to it in the description. Do not get too excited though. So that tutorial told me I needed to make a 32-bit prefix for Office, which I did, and then install a few things using wine tricks like Microsoft's fonts, MSXML, some rich edits, DLLs, and some GDI plus libraries, all of which are needed to actually go through the install and display the various windows. And this time, it looked like the installer would actually work. The progress bar moved very, very slowly, but it did appear and move. But after 20 minutes, I got this error, which, looking at it online, seems to affect Windows users too, except I don't have the tools on Linux to fix that error, since it seems to require the Windows control panel to fix it. So, no dice for Office 365. I'm not saying it's impossible, maybe you can follow along with the tutorial and actually get Office 365 to run. I couldn't, and I'm pretty sure everyone who would need Office on Linux would not be ready to jump to all of these hoops without any guarantee of the app working. So, in my mind, it means that no Office 365 is not supported under Linux. And also, the tutorial also says that Outlook and Access wouldn't work, so you're not getting the full Office suite anyway. And I know you can install the web versions of Office 365 through a Snap package, but these are not the full Office suite. If you need the real Office suite, the online versions don't work for you. And if you can be satisfied with only the online versions, then you'll be better served with only Office or LibreOffice anyway. So the online version of Office, pretty useless in my opinion. Now, I then turned my attention to Office 2021, the one-time purchase version of Microsoft Office, the latest at the time I'm recording this. I followed the same steps as listed for the tutorial for Office 365, 
installing into a new prefix of Wine, installing everything needed through Wine Tricks just in case. I ran the installer from the ISO image of Office 2021. I also tried from a copy of all these files to my actual SSD and the install failed immediately without even trying to start. I got an error message in French, interestingly, even though my entire system is in English. So not really doable or at least not easily doable for Office 2021 either. The last thing I tried was installing Office 365 inside a Windows virtual machine and then copying the installed files over to Linux. This is a last resort that you can try for when the install program crashes, but the programs themselves might actually run. As expected though, pasting all the Office related files in their respective directories in Wine's virtual C drive did not do anything, even after adding the few regedit changes mentioned by the online tutorial I found. Trying to run this program through a double click or through the command line with the right prefix didn't work either. Not a big surprise, there's probably a ton of missing DLLs and registry entries, but the command line didn't tell me about any of them, so I have no idea how to fix that. So maybe it is possible to get a recent version of Office to run on Linux, but if that's the case, it is so convoluted that most people who actually need Office on Linux would never bother with it. And I know you can run Office 2007 or 2010 or even 2016 on Linux using something like Play on Linux. It apparently works relatively well, but these are almost 10 year old or more versions of Office and they are not what people want to access these days. If you work at a company, you use Office 365 and that's the thing you want to run, not Office 2007. And seven. Now next was the Adobe Creative Suite and specifically Photoshop. I tried using the Play on Linux built-in script just to see. Play on Linux is, as far as I know, no longer maintained, but it can still be used to install a few things, so I decided to give it a go. The script crashed a bit and failed to download things, probably because it hasn't been updated in a while. It did manage to make a window for the Adobe installer appear, but it failed immediately because it couldn't download the required files. Yeah, Play on Linux is just woefully outdated for most modern software. It's not something I would recommend using. Now, I tried the same thing with bottles and nothing happened. Opening through a terminal showed absolutely nothing, no specific error. The installer just doesn't even open. I then decided to create a wine prefix to try and install Photoshop using basic wine stable. Nothing here either. The installer never actually displays any window. It's stuck. There's no specific error or missing DLL that I could try to fix. But I've been told that installing Photoshop from inside a Windows VM or actual Windows install and copying the right folders over to Linux was a way to make that thing work. So that's what I tried. Now, of course, I had to start a free trial and give them some payment details. Let's hope I don't forget to cancel that afterwards. After Photoshop downloaded inside of Windows, I copied all the directories I could find where Adobe might store files. So program files, common files, and everything they store in app data as well, all the various subdirectories in there. And I pasted all of that into the corresponding directories of a fresh bottles prefix. After that, I tried running the Photoshop executable from Bottles and it didn't work either. DLLs are missing from the install for some reason or another and simply cannot be found. At that point, I simply gave up on trying to install it. I didn't try any other programs because I would expect the exact same result. If the method that people tell you can potentially work doesn't, even with a lot of elbow grease, then definitely this thing is not supported by Wine. If you have to copy files from Windows to a Linux partition, and even in that case it doesn't always work, then no, the program is not supported. Now let's move on to Affinity Software, something a lot of people would love to see on Linux. I downloaded the free trial installer for Affinity Designer, which made me create an account, which really sucks. See what I have to do for these videos? I have to create a bunch of online accounts and then remember to delete them afterwards because they send me new emails every single day. It's just the worst. It's such a hard job, really. Now I tried to run the Affinity Designer installer with wine inside of bottles, but it failed immediately. Apparently something like not having an icon in the installer, a required field not being there or something along those lines. Trying to run it with default wine outside of bottles also gave the same error 
and also did not work. So once again, I tried installing the app under a Windows VM and copying the files over. And here, no dice either. After copying everything to a new prefix in bottles and running the executable for Affinity Designer inside this prefix, it seems to try and load something from the Microsoft Store and it doesn't run, obviously, because that store doesn't exist on Linux. I tried copying my user files to the wine bottle as well after logging in to my free trial under Windows, maybe to try and bypass the call to the Windows Store, but it didn't work, it failed with the exact same error. So Affinity Designer at least doesn't run, I would assume the same error applies to Affinity Photo. Because it's an error from a Windows component that the program cannot access, I'm pretty sure that Affinity Photo being a paid program as well does the exact same kind of check. So no, Affinity Software also not supported under Wine, unfortunately. Finally, I decided to give a shot to AutoCAD, another program often cited as a big missing piece for Linux. Here again, an account is needed to even start a free trial because, of course, and of course you need to enter a valid phone number for a free trial because you need to verify that you're an actual human. You have to protect this very lightweight and very precious executable from bots trying to download it, right? Bots would definitely do something with AutoCAD, maybe. Now, trying to run that precious installer with bottles failed immediately. A bunch of DLLs are apparently missing from the default Wine install. Bottles does have an auto installer for Autodesk Fusion, which I tried to install and run just as a consolation prize. And this did allow me to run the program, although it is not really AutoCAD. Also trying to sign in didn't work because it opened the web browser, which isn't then able to link back to the Fusion app, meaning I was never able to sign in and I could never even try the program. So no dice here, AutoCAD just doesn't run under Linux, at least there's no easy way that a normal person would actually agree to, to get AutoCAD running on Linux. If you need to copy half of Windows to a wine partition to maybe hope to see a window open, then definitely that's not something that anyone who needs AutoCAD for work is going to be willing to do. Now, I'm sure someone will mention that I haven't tried Crossover, the paid tool made by Codeweavers, the biggest contributor to Wine. And that's why I will mention them here. In their compatibility database, none of these programs are listed as supported either. The only one that could work is Photoshop CC 2019 that has a rating of three stars, which means limited functionality. I'm not even sure you could still get Photoshop CC 2019 because now you just have Photoshop CC, which is always updated. So pretty sure that's not something you can still install anyway. Neither Office 365, the latest version of Photoshop or the Creative Suite, neither AutoCAD 2020 or Affinity Designer or Affinity Photo work under crossover. If there was a single way, even ultra convoluted, to get these working, you know the developers of the paid option that lets you run these programs would have built a script to make all the necessary changes and they would have advertised it heavily. Now, maybe they could do that script by procuring various DLLs from various sources, but legally they're not allowed to do that because not all DLLs are free to download and to use. If you're an individual, you can absolutely look them up online and download them, but it doesn't mean that this is something that is allowed. So maybe Crossover has ways to run these various applications, but simply cannot build the recipe to run them in one click because all the required pieces are missing. Maybe that's something I should ask Crossover developers and maybe I should plan an interview with them. Let me know if that's something that would interest you. Okay, so by that point, you get the gist. Wine is just not a suitable solution to run the biggest major Windows programs on Linux. Don't get me wrong, Wine does support a lot of Windows programs, from game launchers to regular apps to older versions of Office or even older versions of Photoshop. But it's clear that the latest versions of the most popular things to run on Windows simply are not going to run on Linux with Wine or at least they require way too much elbow grease to run. Let us be honest here, if you can't download the executable, double click it, follow the steps and then run the app from your menu, then you've lost 99% of people who would potentially migrate to Linux if their favorite app was available. A Linux beginner is not running 20 command lines to maybe hope that at some point an app will sort of half run. That's just not 
an acceptable experience to say that you support an application. Having to copy files over from an actual Windows install is even worse. And it's very surprising to me because games run extremely well on Linux these days. You can play about 70% of Steam's catalog. You can run the launchers from EA, from Ubisoft. You can play Epic Games, GOG Games. And these were never designed for Linux in most cases. But when we're talking major Windows apps, things just do not work at all. And you would think there would be as much developer interest, if not more, to get this stuff running as there is interest to get games running. Maybe it's down to not having a giant company like Valve trying to push and fund this work. No one really has an interest in getting Office or Photoshop running properly on Linux. It's not like there's an app marketplace that would like to sell these apps to Linux users or who would want to sell hardware running Linux that can also run Office or Photoshop. There's no Valve equivalent for just regular Windows apps. Code weavers would have a major interest in running these apps on Linux, but chances are the work needed to do so needs a much bigger company and much more funding to make it happen, or it is blocked by various legal problems. And just to conclude, I know that we have tons of really, really good alternatives on Linux. Personally, even if Microsoft Office and Photoshop were available on Linux, I would still use LibreOffice or OnlyOffice and GIMP because they suffice to my needs, I know how to use them, they're fast, they're reliable, they're open source, I'm really happy with them. But let's be honest, a lot of professionals that really require Excel and macros or require Photoshop or Premiere will not just append their entire knowledge and workflow and previous projects to move to a free and open source alternative that could potentially do everything they do, but they would have to relearn everything and start from scratch. No one is going to do that. So we need these major Windows apps to support Linux at some point if we want more people moving to Linux with professional applications in mind. Right now though, Wine is not that solution to get these apps working. Whether they're just too complex and use too weird versions of different libraries to render anything, or maybe there are some legal problems bringing certain DLLs that would let these apps run, I'm not sure, but the reality of it is these apps just don't run on Linux and until their developers have an interest in bringing a native Linux version, we're probably never gonna see them. What you are going to see though is this segue to our sponsor. It's Tuxedo Computers. You know of them by now, they make computers that run with Linux out of the box. And the major argument for this compared to a normal Windows computer is that you know all the hardware is supported under Linux because Tuxedo makes sure that's the case and they actually contribute code upstream to make sure all the features are properly supported. They have a big range of devices that will fit every price point and every need and I only use Tuxedo computers these days. I have my laptop, which is what I use to run this entire channel, write my scripts, edit videos, publish, check comments and do everything else, all the podcast, everything. And all my gaming is done on Linux using Nobara on one of their desktop computers. So if you need a new computer, if you need a new PC, you want to support Linux, you want to use Linux and you want to support a company that actually contributes to Linux, Click the link in the description below and check out Tuxedo. They're really, really solid. Anyway, thanks everyone for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications or to write a comment. And if you really enjoyed the video, there are plenty of links in the description as well to support the channel with a bunch of cool perks along the way. Anyway, thanks for watching and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye.